This video is one in a series of videos that cover database topics in three themes. We look at Oracle Apex, Application Express for web applications, relational database concepts for designing and building databases, and SQL, the programming language for working with a relational database. If you want to work with the video series, you can go to this URL to get the scripts and handouts. In the previous video, we very quickly created an application in Apex, and we created a report page and a form page. I just want to mention that Apex, Application Express, is known as a declarative tool. It minimizes the amount of code that a developer would need to do to get something functioning. It's a great tool to work with. We're going to look at Page Designer and look at the three sections available in Page Designer. And using that, we'll look at the source code for the report that we created in the previous video. We'll also look at the properties of the form and see how a form is linked to a table and the individual page items, the items on the page, are linked to columns in the table. The report pulls data out of a table for display purposes. A form is interactive with the table. It allows you to view and update data. We will see how to display the primary key field in a form because Apex by default hides that field. When you're developing, I believe strongly that you should have the primary key field displayed. It will help you troubleshoot when things aren't working properly. If working with a relational database is somewhat new to you, also seeing that primary key value reinforces its purpose and its relationship to foreign key fields in other tables. We'll look at column names versus column aliases, the actual column names in the database versus what we see in a form or a report. And we're going to set the user interface default so that we have user-friendly names, not just the actual table column names. And finally, we'll use the lookup feature in the object browser to create a lookup or a reference table based on existing data in a column in a table. We have a lot to cover. I'm logged in as Mark Adams, one of the developer accounts I created for this workspace. I'm going to go into Application Builder and then into the application built in the previous video. We have a report page and we have a form. I'm going to run the application and because I've already logged in before, I won't be prompted. If you're prompted, you'll have to log in with your username and password. So I'm going to click on the report and we see the report of the different animals at the shelter. I'm going to click on the Edit Page 2 feature in the designer bar and take a quick look at, and let me switch this to layout. This is typically what you see when you first come in to Page Designer. You have a rendering panel, you have a layout panel, and you have properties over on the far right. When I select something on the left in rendering, I will see the properties in the far right. Over in rendering, we see the content body. If we click on report, then over on the right hand side, we see this is an interactive report. We are seeing the properties of this report, the report as a whole. We can also see properties of individual columns. This is an interactive report, and we see the source code right here. If I click on this icon, a window opens up that shows me the actual source code. I have an SQL video for this Apex video that explains the source code, if you want to look at that. If I look at the form that is called by this report, then I, I can run this report and I can click on the link that will call up the record in a form for a particular animal. So I click this link. And now I want to look at that in Page Designer. So I click Edit Page 3. The number doesn't have to match mine. And now I see a different set of features, a different set of elements, because this is a form rather than a report. 
each of these is referred to as a page item and they have been linked each item to a column in a table so we can see a naming convention here p3 for page 3 underscore and then the actual column name in the table that this is linked to if I click on a particular page item over here on the right hand side notice that this is hidden but I want to see that so I'm going to change that property so that it is display only you don't edit the primary key that's generated by a trigger that gets a value from a sequence but I'm going to click display only so that we see that I'm going to scroll down and we see that in the source section this is a database column we have to match it with the actual column name in the table then this form interacts with the columns in a table I'm going to click Save because we unhid the primary key field and I'm going to run and so now we see the primary key field displayed it is not editable I can't click in it and change it and it's got a label that just says new I'll click on edit again scroll back up and here's the label so this is going to be the animal ID and I'll say PK in parentheses save that and run that again if you'll notice and I think this is new to 18.1 it might have come up in 5 but the label for the the label for the page item is embedded in the box itself so if I were going to change this to dogs and cats which I won't do I'm not going to save that I see the label for the data or the field embedded in the box where I would type that in but we have Dom breed primary color mix adult size some of these the column label is clear and easy to understand but SPNE I'm not so sure what that stands for so what I wanted to point out is that the, the column names in the table which are often abbreviated may not provide a useful interface for the for the end user so the next thing I want to do is I want to show you how you can change the column interfaces we'll do that in object browser remember that's an SQL workshop so let me back out of here I'll go to the application then I'll go to object browser in object browser we're going to have the option of setting the user interface defaults what label we want for a column instead of the column name itself but we also have a very handy feature called the lookup table I'm going to select animals the first thing I'm going to do is click on UI defaults and since I've not set these before I have to click the button create defaults create defaults and then go into the animals table and I'll click on animal ID I can set the label for this field and you should see help text which is there because I provided comments in the scripts when we created the tables usually this is going to be blank if comments weren't embedded in the table itself now what I want to do is step through the fields I can apply changes and then go out to the list and come back in or I can just advance here and step through the 16 columns in the table category looks good there's nothing more I need to add here here I want it to say dominant breed not an abbreviation primary color is good mix perhaps I want to say something like is this animal a mixed breed and click next adult size is fine name sex status house trained that's two words and this would be spay spayed neutered chip number if the animal has a chip an embedded chip estimated date of birth estimated age we calculate that 
later on in a future video. Date created, date modified. We no longer have another arrow pointing to a new field, to another field, so we click Apply Changes. We are not going to see an effect in our form because the form has already been created. But in the next couple of videos, after we've made a few more changes, we're going to recreate this form and see the impact of what we're doing. I won't take time in this video, but you should step through each one of these tables and the columns in the tables and make sure the labels are user friendly. Do it now before you create reports and forms. So the last thing I want to do, and notice this went from object browser to utilities. So clicking that button to set the user interface defaults popped us over into a different section of SQL Workshop. So I'm going to go back to object browser and I'm going to go to animals again. And what I want to do is I want to take the dominant breed I want Apex to generate a list of values from the existing data. So if, if I click on the data, we see things like pit bull, Labrador retriever, Chihuahua, terrier, Chihuahua, German shepherd. I want a list of the breeds that we already have in this table. So I go to table and I click create lookup table. I want it to be for the dominant breed. Click next. And I will go ahead and take the default setting here for the new table name. This is going to do an awful lot. And we'll see the impact of that in just a moment. Click on Next and Create Lookup Table. Notice over on the left-hand side what happens to tables. We now actually have a new table, another table. It has dominant breed ID and dominant breed as a field. If we look at the data, then we will see the breeds that exist in the table, and we have 23 of them. And we have a primary key value generated by the database because when the lookup table was created, coming over here to Sequences, we now have Dominant Breed Lookup Sequence. If we go to Triggers, we have Dominant Breed Lookup Trigger. So just clicking that button to create the lookup, Apex created a table, extracted data from the original table, put it in the new table, and created a primary key with a sequence and a trigger. If we come back to animals and we look at the data, we also see that that dominant breed out here to the, to the end now is no longer the word, but a primary key value. And if you noticed, also in triggers, we have a red mark here that indicates that this trigger is out of sync with the existing table as it is right now. If I go to code and save and compile, then when we do a refresh, the red mark goes away. So many helpful features. That red mark is an alert that there's something that's changed so that the trigger and the table may no longer work together. It turned out that the coding wasn't affected, but it's very helpful that we get these flags from Apex about changes. In the next video, we're going to add a column to this table so we can upload pictures. I want to illustrate how you can find all the related videos. Any one particular Apex video may have related database and SQL videos. The Apex videos are numbered. So we have Apex 00, which talks about how to install the software and upgrade Apex. And then there'll be other videos. Let's say I have Apex 03 and others that go down to 14, 16, whatever. So some number. When I have related database videos, then those are going to be called apex03.db and then whatever number that video is. I might have, for example, three different videos related to Apex 03, so I would have db and I'd have 03 as the third video. If I have also some SQL related videos, for Apex 03, 
where I'm showing you things that would happen in the SQL commands rather than the GUI interface, the application interface of Apex, then that's going to be Apex 03 SQL 01, and I'll keep that going for as many videos that I have for that particular series. So it'll start with the number of the Apex related video, followed by DB or SQL, and then the number of that particular video. Hopefully that'll help you locate the related videos.